What's going on YouTube? This is Rodney with Garacore EDC with a sort of a tag to Baz on Blades. He did a knife review not sure how long ago on a Kershaw spline where he modified the clip and it intrigued me to take the one I have and modify it. So I thank you for being intuitive and changing some things and I did basically what he did with a little bit something different and he wanted me to follow up when I got it done so that's what I'm doing here this is a nice little EDC knife sort of Pilar in size or um, you know it's not very big it's it's a tiny little thing we're looking at roughly less than four inches or right at four inches in the closed position with a cutting edge of about two and three quarter and a blade length of about two and seven eighths and an overall length of about um, six and maybe three quarter give or take a little bit thickness in hand on the frame is right a little bit less than 400 thousandths blade thickness is 105 thousandths behind the edge we're looking at 21 thou so it's not super slicey this is a hollow grind it has some nice jimping on the top of the blade there execute this is I can get not quite a four finger grip when I'm grabbing with my pointer finger I can definitely get three on it nice aggressive jimping that locks in that I'm not gonna lose control of this knife and it has a downward sort of a maybe a sheep's foot style blade with a, a nice amount of belly there is a small sharpening choil there's also jimping on the flipper tab which is sort of a big flipper tab but it, uh, it gives you a secure amount in there that your finger is not going to slide out of there in the using of this knife there is a slight cutaway on the presentation side that allows you to access the lock bar now this is an assisted knife the one thing that I could say that I don't like about this knife a hundred percent is the again the size of the flipper tab it's sort of large and when you're sticking it in the pocket your hand can rub up against that there's no sharp edges on it but it is a little large for such a small knife but it, it's executed well it works good um, this knife is on uh, I believe I have not taken it apart I believe it is on bronze washers function is good it's good and snappy again it's an assisted knife and I know some people aren't really keen on the assisted knives it has a nice plastic or FRN or GTN splined back spacer and a lanyard option that is nice and I picked this model up um, new second hand on eBay for eleven dollars and ninety cents so I was tickled I got it so cheap um, I'm thinking you can find this knife pretty regularly on eBay or Amazon or different places for around twenty bucks give or take a little bit so it is the Kershaw Blackwash series and it is the spline and the model number is 3450BW and I'm guessing the BW stands for Blackwash there's the barcode on it comes in a nice box and it comes in with the typical leaflet Kershaw and it tells you all kinds of information as far as use and different knives and you know, identifying the parts of your knife and opening the Kershaw speed safe, flipper and thumb stud, closing the folder. It gives a lot of useful information, maintaining the knife and grind angles and sharpening and carrying maintenance and cleaning and oiling and stuff. So, you know, Kershaw, some people don't care for Kershaw, but they are an American owned company that makes a lot of their nut products in China and they also make an American line. Um, I've had quite a few Kershaws over the years of the blur and the blackout and the leaks and you know I, I still have most of those 
y'all will eventually see them, I'm sure. But the main reason, again, I'm, I'm doing this video in a response to Baz on Blades. I like, I'm a subscriber of his, and he's got some nice content, and uh, seems like a really genuine guy. Um, but what he did was had a clip issue, and the clip went straight down. So what it was is this clip originally looked, he had a nice drawing of it, and I've got a couple things of information on this sheet. You had the spoon of the clip, and then the clip went straight back, and wrapped around like that and the screw heads are flush in here but where it mounted to the frame of the knife when you slid it in the pocket this portion of the clip because the screws are countersunk that wasn't the issue the your pants or jeans or whatever would get caught on the front end of the clip so what he did and worked great and I thought it was a great idea when I watched the video is he come in here and made the clip sort of like this. You have the spoon up and it goes up and then straightens out. So now it's in the bent position. So you have more access for the knife to slide into the pants to give you a better representation. You can see the difference of how this clip would function better than the factory clip. And what he did was great. And I replied in, in his video, I was going to do a little something similar, but yet different, is I first took the clip off and bent it. And then I did some math and I set up my milling machine with a little small fixture plate. And you can see the formula, roughly the clip thickness at the bend where it goes where it meets the knife is 37 thousandths. And the ramp area of where it's going on, where it joins the knife, was about 5 eighths. But I shortened it down to a half an inch to make sure I didn't machine the back side of the clip and it wouldn't show with the clip in place. As you can see, you can tell that there is no exposed ramp in area. And I roughly figured it to, depending on how you look at it, uh, the hypotenuse here is 500 thousandths, 501 thousandths and about a 4.23 degree angle or 85.76 if you're pulling from 90. So I grabbed roughly a four degree angle block and put it underneath my fixture plate and set up in my mill at work and machined, did the math and centered it and found the radiuses on the clip and I machined a ramp. Now if you can see in there how it's a little thicker, and I still might do some tweaking on this to, to straighten out that angle somewhat. In other words, squeeze it down right here a little bit to, to bring that more flat. But it's a, got a nice large throat on it, goes in and out of pocket very well. And you can see where that clip is machined into the frame at an angle. So as it slides into the pocket, there is no uh, engagement of the front side of that clip and it works really well in and out of pocket um, you know, it's, it was definitely something that needed to be addressed by Kershaw and Baz on Blades option is totally fine if you don't have access to a money machine or any way to, to do that but you can see that in pocket it's fairly deep carry. The only thing exposed is the lanyard hole, which is really nice. And you can see, I don't know if I can try to point this out. Forgive me for my lighting, but you can see where the jean material would slide into the pants. When it slides in, the front of that clip could get caught if it was raised up. And what he did on his is not only did he bend the clip, but he ground the front portion of the clip down to allow it to be less snagging when it was going in the pocket. And that's when I decided to say, well, hey, you know, I'll do the same mod, but I'll do it just a little bit different. And again, I want, he said he wanted to see what I did, so that's what I'm doing with the video. Um, but I modified that, and to give you an idea of what it looks like, let me, I've showed you the, the pictures and the, the math I did, but I, let's actually let you take a look at the clip recess itself 
Now this is a T6, which is not perfect, but it's not bad. They are flathead screws, so you know I'll give Kershaw a A plus rating on that because there's so many companies out there that are putting deep pocket carry clips on their knives. And they got screw heads that are sticking up, and it makes it hard. But you can see where I have... Now, granted, this is sort of rudimentary. Um, I actually have a little burr there that I didn't remove. I need to grab my little file set. I did this yesterday at work. But I've got it, a little bit of Sharpie mark in there, so the shiny side. And the, granted, this is supposed to be a grade of stainless, so it shouldn't rust. You can still see that there's plenty of thread left. And this is just the machining marks, and as you can see, you can't couldn't see it with the clip in place, but you can get an idea of how deep that pocket is. I didn't go quite the 37 thou, so it's almost there, and it is at a four degree angle to allow for that ramp in in the pocket. Now. I wanted to say I had a small file here, but I'm not seeing it next to me. I'll have to take that back off again later. There's a slight little burr right there that I must have missed. But it was real simple to do. You can see from the pocket. Let's see if I can straighten that out just a little bit. That's a little better maybe because it bends in and ramps up it um pulls that clip up let me get this screw on here i just wanted to show you that that way you sort of had an idea of what i did to get the ramp fixed and basically i just set up in the mill i taped the knife up and mounted it um, to a little aluminum fixture block that I use for various jobs with a cant twist clamp. And like, again, I, I taped this up so I wouldn't mark it or scratch or anything. You can see there's no scratches on the black wash. Um, and I set it at that four degree angle. And I, I, the, one of the reasons I didn't machine it all the way down was because um, I didn't want to take a chance of loosening the threads up and not having enough, not loosening threads, not having enough thread engagement and wearing possibility because I'm the type of person that takes the knives apart quite a bit and as of recently here and I didn't want to take a chance of not having enough thread for that forward hole. But I went almost to full 37 and you can maybe see to where I went maybe a little heavier than I should have. You can see a slight gap there at the very front. I went a little bit farther because I first set it up and didn't go far enough. And then I set it back up and went a little too far. But, you know, it's, it's a personal knife. It's not a customer's knife. I wasn't really taking my time with it like I should. Um, or a subscriber's knife. Not, and I'm not saying that I this is something that I do I, you know but if somebody were to reach out to me and say hey can you mod my knife for me I'd be willing to entertain it um, but this is a great little EDC very friendly neat little knife really like the blade shape this is a less George design I'm not familiar with a lot of his work blade centering is right down the center the action is great. It's got no detent ball. Lockup is about not quite 50%. And it has this uh, pivot collar thing going on here that is an over travel stop for the frame lock, which is a nice built in feature. It has a stylized pivot here. And of course, the screws are all T6. This is nicely done. And I'm guessing that this G10 here 
I'm guessing it is drilled and tapped because or either we have barrel screws again I have not taken this apart to where these have screws on each side so and then we have the lock barrel um, pin for the blade tang to engage in the open position again the action is great it is a two-handed knife or throw, close it on the hand I mean it is small enough to where you can thumb it and close it but you know it's a nice little knife and that is what I got for you Baz if you get a chance to watch this video give a reply again what you did to yours was a great mod a great addition and very insightful and thoughtful i would have never thought about doing this i may have but i highly doubt it um on my own without watching your intuitive video thank you so much and i hope you like the little mod that i did and if any of y'all like this mod um hit that like button or let me know in the comments i look forward to talking with you be safe out there god bless and remember keep that edge right this is Rodney with Garrett Court EDC. Bye now.